You shouldn't have drank so much. You weren't asleep. You're unconscious. I had a good reason to have a drink after yesterday. I wasn't expecting to get called a slag by Robbie. In public. Really did me head in. It's no wonder I had to pour myself into bed. I thought he looked a bit more relaxed going in this morning. I hope he'll be all right with the gel. That's good for him. Not having me holding his hand all the time. It's definitely helped Imelda being off school. I hope she doesn't come back and just pick up where she left off. Well, at least Mrs Plummer knows the full story now. She'll be on the alert for anything out of order. I hope they don't just try and sweep it under the carpet. Pretend there's no problem just to protect their school name. The school won't know what hit them if that happens. I'll be off to the papers, they'll lot. They can whistle for their good name. If you go to the papers, you'll lose your job. I don't care. If they fail him again, I've promised him that I won't. You only get one chance at growing up. And I'm not letting some bully wreck that. See ya. Let's hope our defence fellas up to the job, eh? <laughs> And Anthea. Look like a man on a mission there, kid. Oh, yeah. I'm uh, just off to Rini's grave, you know. Uh, it's our anniversary. It's two years since she passed away. I just thought I'd go and have a little chat with her. You know, it's, uh, it's never easy talking to other people about her. How come? Well, uh, you know, the way she died, like at the bingo. So I just think people will laugh. No one will laugh. Yeah, it's probably just me, isn't it? Eh? Anyway, I'd better be off. I won't be long. I'll, uh, I'll be back soon. Give you a hand. Oh, you're good hearted. That's if I ever get started. Keep getting dragged away. Right. Uh, don't forget now. Sand them down properly. <laughs> you say you were a man driven to distraction by the attacks both you and your home had come under. And my family. It was like it was never ending. Your house was burgled twice prior to the night in question. Could you tell us about the first time? There was myself, my wife Anthea, two of our neighbours and Kitty Hilton. She's in her 80s now. She had a stroke after it. Finished up in a home she never recovered, really. It was one of the most terrifying experiences of our lives. I mean, I suffer with angina, but those lads just left me there to die that night. These lads that left you to die, could you tell us what happened? Well, we had two of our neighbours over for a meal to show off our new kitchen, and suddenly, out of nowhere, they just smashed their way into my house, started ransacking the place. Did they tie you up? Every one of us. And they gagged us, and they screamed at us, wanted to rob whatever cash we had, stole stuff from our pockets. They even took our wedding rings. Then they just wrecked the place around us and drew all over me face. They drew on your face? Yeah, they put tape over my mouth. Then they used this lipstick to, to draw, like, this mad grin. I was sick to my stomach wondering what they were going to do next. And then one of them... One of them groped my wife in front of us. The way he was carrying on, I thought he was going to rape her. But he didn't go that far. No. But he might as well have done the effect it had on us. How did you feel about your wife being treated in this way? Terrified. Helpless. Any other feelings? Just powerless, really. Humiliated. And all this took place with your baby granddaughter upstairs? Yes. There was another incident when your son was alone in the house. There was, yes. Your Honour, in one respect this is hearsay evidence, but in another it shows what my client believed and how it affected him. Do you have any objection? No, Your Honour, the incident was reported to the police. There is no question but that it happened. Very well. Yes, Mr. Dobson. Tell us what happened to your son. <sighs> Michael was the only one in. He was in a wheelchair at the time. And? And this thug broke in and terrorised him and abused him. He, he tipped him out of the wheelchair, smashed him round the house. Could have left him a cripple for life. Another member of your family also came under attack from Robert Moffat. 
Is that correct? That's correct, yeah. My daughter, Jacqueline. And he threatened me and all. Said I was a dead man. And did you believe him? After the way he treated her, I wouldn't have put anything past him. How had he treated her? Well, he came round looking for her a good few times. Threatening us to make her go out and see him. He almost kicked the door in once. Another time he hit her in the face, then he locked her in where she works. Like he was keeping it against her will. And he was always very violent towards her. In fact, she was absolutely terrified of him. After such a catalogue of provocation, violent acts and humiliation, what action did you feel compelled to take? I bought the shotgun. You do not deny that you bought an illegal firearm? Nope. Could you tell us why? Why do you think? After all that happened, I wanted to protect my family, and my home, and myself. Hi, kid. Hiya. Hey, I bet you're glad I've got my paintbrush out. It's only temporary the way they were. We were wondering. No, it's seen in the paper, you know, about Liverpool going in for this capital of culture thing, right? I mean, that's what the shutters are all about. Thought to put our house in for it. You are joking. Yeah. <laughs> you reeled me in there, didn't you? Yeah, well, I thought I'd break up your day for you. So how's things between you and Marty now? Oh, it's a bit easier since we backed off on the IVF. They had taken over our lives. It was getting ridiculous. Oh, that sounds the right decision, then. Feels that way. At least it gives the family room to breathe. Let them get on with their own lives without me holding them back all the time. Yeah, I've had much of the same with our Lindsay these past few weeks. You know, we're living a life for me. She got the message yet? Yeah. Well, she's getting there, you know, slowly, I think. Was there a party on the close that night? Over the way, yeah. With all that music blaring out. You know, that non-stop banging rubbish. Can't even call it music, really. It drives you mad. We are dealing with a murder charge here, Mr. Dobson. Yes, Your Honour, but my client's case is that the party was the start of a chain of events. Very well. Keep it short. Could you tell us what happened? There was gangs of lads roaming round, cars being raced on and off the close, all kinds. And did you have direct contact with these lads? <sighs> Had them kicking at me door, abusing us, threatening us the lot. One of them shoved his face up to the glass, scared the living daylights out of us. Did you call the police? Oh, yeah. Waste of time that was, though. Why? Yeah, well, when they finally did come, fair enough, they told them to turn it down. So they did. The minute they'd gone, though, back on it went. This time louder than before. It was mayhem. And it was later that night that you heard an intruder in your home? Yeah. Yes, it was. Can you describe to the court exactly what happened? Have you let them know you're interested in that job? No, not yet. Oh, there's a surprise. And why not? Because you're too busy fussing round over me. It's not just down to leaving you to cope on your own. I promise it'll be a massive move for me. Oh, love, it'll be a massive chance for you and all. And time is running out. Look, love, don't blow it for my sake. Because you'll only regret it in the long term. You know you will. So you heard a noise downstairs, you went to investigate, you came back upstairs, you took the gun from its hiding place, you loaded the gun, you went back downstairs, you warned the intruder, and you fired the gun. That's right. My learned friend asked how many seconds elapsed between you shouting, get out or I'll shoot, and the exact moment when you fired the gun. And your reply was about five seconds. That's right. And yet we heard from Robbie Moffat earlier an entirely different version of events. Robbie Moffat alleged that you issued the warning and fired the gun immediately, giving Clinton Moffat no time to identify himself or to explain why he was there, or indeed to run away in fear when faced with a man with a sawn-off shotgun. Robbie Moffat is a lying crook. Now, who are you going to believe? Him or me? 
I merely require clarification. Yeah, well, it was about five seconds, and that's all I know. Might you be lying, Mr. Dixon? If you could answer the question, please. I sworn on the Holy Bible to tell the truth, and that's what I'm doing. I shouted that warning. I gave him about five seconds, then I pulled the trigger. Just when I thought he was about to jump me. And my wife will back me up on that. I'm sure she will. She will. Thank you. No more questions. I'd like to call Mrs. Anthea Dixon, your... Anthea Dixon, court three, please. Can you take the Bible in your right hand and read from the card? Here we go. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And you told him not to use the gun? I wanted to call the police. But you didn't? The phone was in the room where the burglar was. But he ignored you and went into the room? That's right. Did he move quickly? No. Slowly? Yes. Calmly? He wasn't exactly calm. How would you describe his mental state? He was very frightened. Would you say that he was in a heightened emotional state? I suppose so. And then he saw the burglar? He did. But you didn't? I was still on the stairs. Did you hear anything then that might suggest that the burglar rushed at your husband? Not that I heard. Did you hear any sounds of the burglar ransacking the premises? No. Nothing that your husband might have mistaken for a burglar about to attack him? No. Nothing that might have caused him to feel the need to defend himself? I ask you again, Mrs. Dixon, what was it that caused your husband to feel the need to use a gun in order to defend himself? I don't know. You don't know because nothing happened, did it? Clinton Moffat was 14 feet away from him. He hadn't gone there to burgle the house or to do you any harm. He was there to prevent his brother from burgling the house. Why on earth would he do anything to make your husband feel that he needed to defend himself? I don't know. Mrs. Dixon. Your husband shot Clinton Moffat in cold blood, didn't he? Am I allowed to make you a coffee without it becoming some big care issue thing? Come here. Before you say anything, I know I'm doing me pills. I could have come in and got them myself, and I would have done an all. I can't cope with some things. There's things you can't cope with that worry me most. Look, I'm not even going to discuss it with you. Why not? Because I know what you're like. You have got the chance of a top job in Newcastle, and you're going to stand there and talk yourself out of it. Well, I'm not going to let you. You're taking that job, whether you like it or not. End of story. Well, you're right, not wanting to discuss it, because there's nothing to discuss. Five seconds, you say? About five seconds. Your husband called out to Clinton Moffat, get out or I'll shoot, and then waited about five seconds before he pulled the trigger. Yes. Your Honour, if I may demonstrate for clarity. I'll call out the warning and then count the elapsed time. Get out or I'll shoot. 
One second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. Is that how long your husband waited before he pulled the trigger? It seemed like it. Seemed like it? I thought it was, yeah. You thought it was? May I remind you, Mrs. Dixon, that you are under oath? How long was it actually that your husband waited? It wasn't five seconds at all, was it? It seemed like five seconds. It wasn't five seconds at all, or even four or three or two. Because if he'd left any time at all, Clinton Moffat would have called out. It's only me, Mr. Dixon. Don't shoot. It's a misunderstanding. But he didn't have time to call out, did he? Because your husband gunned him down in cold blood. It was five seconds. Five seconds? I'm sure it was. I think you're lying, Mrs. Dixon. Lying to protect your husband as any loving wife would. I'm not. It was five seconds, I know it was. If you don't take this job, you'll have turned it down on my account. And no matter how many other excuses you might give, that'd be the real reason, wouldn't it? Hey? Wouldn't it? I suppose so. Yeah. And how do you think that'd make me feel, eh? Knowing it was my fault that you'd missed a brilliant opportunity. How fast do you think that'd wreck me out again? Pretty fast, I guess. Yeah, I'd be in pieces in no time. Look. I want you to be truthful with me now. This job in Newcastle, is it a job you could do? No problem. <laughs> and is it a job you'd want to do? Leaving me out of it. I'd love to have a go at it, yeah. In fact, I think it'd be the making of me. So, all you've got to come to terms with is that when you ring up about this job and when you take it, that'll be the making of me. Here we are then. Back safe. Any sign of Imelda this afternoon? Not even a sniff. But she might be back on Monday, though. <laughs> Let's just enjoy the good news while it lasts, eh? Go and wash your hands. You okay? I popped home to do a pregnancy test. You don't need to say a word. It's written all over your face. We're afraid to not have this baby. I'm sure we are. I know this time we didn't have any men in white coats involved and that we only tried the old-fashioned way, but just because we failed doesn't mean we've got to stop trying. Of course it doesn't. kind of like it the old-fashioned way. Not till after I finish work, though. I better be getting back. He must be fed up with me by now. Me and me long, whinging face. Well, if it was about something ordinary, maybe, but... We're trying to have a baby here. Don't you find it hard, though? Failing time after time. Di, you've never seen my school reports. I got used to the idea of failure at a very early age. today. <laughs> Perfect. Meaning? Well, I thought Ron Dixon was going to get off until he got Anthea in the box. Just to see in his face. Prosecution on rings round her. Still a bit early for that, isn't it? Well, I'm doing is celebrating Ron Dixon going down for life. He hasn't even been found guilty yet, Katie. He will be. It will stand a chance. This is blackmail, you know that? You're saying that if I don't take the job, you'll have a huge breakdown. Got it in one. You ring for the job. Problem solved. OK. But only if you're sure you can cope on your own. I mean, totally sure. Well, I'm as sure as I can be, but uh, I won't really know till I've tried, will I? And I can't try while you're still here. OK. <laughs> oh, good on you, kid. Hey. 
I hope it all works out for you. I really do. Yeah. Same for you as well. I love you, Dad. Oh. I love you too, kid. Hey, go on, go on, get on with it. <laughs> Hello, Raymondo. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I saw you hadn't done a tap. I've fetched me on brush. Ah, uh, you're the good kid. Go on, I'll be with you in a minute. Right. Is it ringing? Yeah. Hello. Um, I'm ringing about the, the vacancy for the management job. This is Lindsay Corkill. Yeah, I work at Brookside Place. Jackie Dixon recommended I call you. I'll uh, make a start then, shall I? Are you all right, Jim? Uh, yeah, I must have got um, tapes on my finger, one in my eye. Go on. Yeah, OK, then. I'll send all my details on to you. Look forward to meeting you. Bye. Don't you think you've had enough of that? Look, I'm getting me to sleep at night. You're going to have to let go of Clint sometime, you know. I don't lie awake thinking about Clint anymore. I lie there thinking about me, the cheap little slag who slept with his brother. And he's only been dead for five minutes. It's, it's Nisha here. Yeah, it's Katie. Yeah, no, listen, I'm, I'm just really worried about her. You couldn't come round and see her, could you? Well, I hate to think what state my dad's gonna be in. It's so odd once they start putting you under pressure like that. It must be awful, eh? Time out well, didn't you? What's wrong? Making sure you got here after he'd done one. Why? What, what's happened? It's me dad, Max. He's gone. Gone where? Well, he hasn't gone shopping, has he? Not after the way you've just let him down in court. Wait, where is he? Where do you think he is, Jackie? He's done a runner. Back of course in less than two hours. What'll happen if you don't show up? You've got no idea where he is. I'm gonna phone his solicitor. There must be some way we can get an adjournment or something. It doesn't matter what the solicitor says. We all know if he doesn't show, there's nothing down for him. Graham Norton with a galaxy of film critics counts down the 100 greatest films tomorrow and Sunday night from 9. Next up, springing from the closet, here comes Chandler's dad in Friends. I've racked my brains trying to think. You don't reckon he'd, you know, do something stupid, do you? Well, I've thought about that, Rachel, but I just don't know. What do you think we should ring the police? I mean, the hospitals or something. No, let's just leave it for a bit longer, eh? Why? Well, if we tell the police, it's as good as telling them he's done a runner.
Have you heard anything? Nothing. Do you know, I must have sent him over a dozen text messages since last night. No reply at all. I've sent that many myself. Oh, it's getting serious now. He's got to be back at court in less than two hours. What'll happen if he don't show up? Well, it's not going to look very good, is it? Especially after the disaster yesterday. Oh, you don't know what it's like facing a barrister. You can't keep up with him. Look, you can't. Andrew, the fact is, we've got to try and find him. How are we going to do that, Jackie? We've got no idea where he is. I'm going to phone his solicitor. There must be some way we can get an adjournment or something. It doesn't matter what the solicitor says. We all know if he doesn't show, there's nothing down for him. That jury saw what happened in court yesterday. What will they think if they realise he's done one? We should still contact the solicitor. Oh, no, I don't think so. If they get a sniff, he's run away, he's finished. Whatever you think, I'm still going to phone him. <sighs> Have you thought this through? I mean, are you really sure? Well, we've been through all this. I told you the job starts on Monday. But you've got nearly a week till then. Oh, six days to be exact. Plus, I've got nowhere to live except a B and B, and I've no childcare. Plus, I've got loads to do. Yeah, but isn't it all a bit of a rush? I'm just worried about you, love. <sighs> Dad, how long have we been discussing this, eh? All last weekend for a start, and you're the one who insisted to go for it and take on the job. So don't start getting cold feet. I'm nervous enough as it is. Yeah, but it's all a bit quick, isn't it? Look, I better make a shape and get on with it, otherwise the job will be gone. I've already messed about not getting in touch earlier. And what about Kyle's? She'll be fine. But what about her schooling? Can't take her out of school in the middle of term, love. It's only a couple of weeks before Christmas. And she's not going to miss anything. the old house? Well, he hated that estate and all. I don't think so. Well, what about the old factory where he used to work? No, he was driving me around one day and insisted we go to the old site. He got out the car, he was walking around for ages, you know, talking about the old job and getting made redundant and that. Would well, you reckon it's worth a try? Well, anything's better than hanging around here. In touch. Bye. You can wait by the phone, go at your reach. Yeah, yeah, of course I can. The solicitor says if he doesn't get back into course, it'll be a disaster. Oh, great. Tell us something we don't know. I'm trying to help here. You should have been signing up yesterday. Mike, stop it, please. <phone rings> it's me, Dad. Dad? Dad, where are you? We've been worried sick. Are you all right? Yeah, Mike's here. And Anthea as well. Where are you? Let me talk to him. He wants you. Hiya, Pops. Where are you? Where is he? OK, yeah, we'll get you straight away. Where are you? Look, Dad, don't be getting upset. What? I can't hear you, Dad. Where are you? OK, you just stay where you are. We're on our way. Dad, whatever you do, stay there, OK? Yeah, I understand, yeah. There's no worries there. Where is he? He's down the ferry terminal. Can you run us there, Jack? Yeah, come on. Oh, give me five minutes to get dressed. He doesn't want you there. You what? How do you know? Cos he's just told me. But you said he was upset. Five minutes is all I need. Get it into your head. He doesn't want you there. You were a disgrace in that witness box. You had the perfect chance to be a strong wife who'd do anything for her husband, and you threw him to the dogs. You tell me why would he want to see you? I did my best. Mike. It's not that simple when you're under oath. You didn't even try. You were too concerned about Clint bloody Moffat to stick up for your own husband. Come on. I'll ring you, Rich. Right. Hey, Dad. Look at that. It's a day to remember, wasn't it? I'm not just talking about the bit at the church. A day to forget, if you ask me. I still wake up sometimes sweating over that. I mean, life was so exciting then. I mean, despite all the heavy stuff, I, I really felt alive. If it hadn't been for the Finnegans, wonder what would have happened with the club? It's history, love. 
Why is the world full of people like the Finnegans and the Moffats, eh? Forget about people like them. Look forward to your new life. I definitely want to forget working at that garage for two years. From designer suits to minty sweatshirts all in the space of a couple of weeks. That was me. <laughs> hey, you've got a whole new career ahead of you. Don't dwell on that. So does that mean you're OK about me going to Newcastle today? Yeah, I've been thinking about that, love. Look, I'm worried about our Kylie. Why don't you leave her here with me? You know, just till you settled in, like. No way. Try not to blame yourself. Uh, how can I? It's all my fault. No! It was Robin Moffat's fault, all of it. If he hadn't have met Jackie, none of this would have happened. We were so happy not long ago. The business was enough for us to live on. Ron's health was better. We had lots to look forward to. I spoilt it all yesterday. No, you didn't. You did your best. Oh, it was Robin Moffat. Everything was going fine till he turned up. But I could have put it right in course. Why did I make such a meal of it? Thinking about people like the Moffats and telling lies under oak. I hate myself for being so weak. I should have stood up in that witness box and fought for my husband's freedom. I should have done what Ron expected of me. <laughs> Look, she's coming with me today. She's all for the reason I'm moving. I want to get a decent job so I can bring her up well. I don't want to have a grown-up with me living hand-to-mouth. It's our big chance and I want us to go for yeah, it. Yeah, but it's not fair, is it? On a little girl. Hey, schooling's important. It's the most important thing in life. We're talking about three weeks. Three weeks of messing about with Christmas nativity plays and making decorations and... And anyway, you can talk. You didn't bother about my education when I was her age or any of the time I was at school. And when did you ever go to my parents' night? Things were different then. You didn't give a damn about my school and all our jimmies. So let me worry about Kylie's education, eh? I love her. Only talking about someone I love. I'll miss her. Oh, I know that, Dad. I'm sorry. <laughs> You've persuaded me over the past few days, and I want that new life, for Kylie's sake as well as mine. My daughter's my top priority, and I've got it all sorted out up here. I'm going to get us the grossiest flat, but in the best area of Newcastle, so I know she'll go to a decent school. You won't have to worry about her education. You'll be proud of her one day, I know that. So, you said we should go. Now's the time to make the big break, eh? Playing at you, got this worried sick. You could have talked to us, you didn't have to run away. I'm sorry. After what happened in court yesterday, she let me down. I've got no chance now. I'm gonna get life. A life sentence, I can't face it. You have to face it. You have to get back to that trial. I've been thinking about that all night. I don't have to go back. Wrong way to feel, though. No, it wasn't. I 
should have been harder because it, it's not all airy fairy stuff now. It's real. It's courts and barristers, the law. My husband could go to jail because of me. He could be locked up until he's an old man. And the way he is, is hard. He could die in prison. <sighs> What do you mean you don't have to face him? Dad, why didn't you come no, home? No, hang on a minute, Jackie. I want to know what he's talking about. What do you mean you don't have to face it? I just needed time to think, son. So I started walking and... I just kept on walking right through the town till I ended up here. You've been sat here all night. Well, round here, you know. I froze to death, Dad. I would have done it if I'd have gone in there. Freezing cold in that water. A man with a heart like mine would be dead within minutes. My body would be out in the Irish Sea before you could say Jack Robbins. Is that what you've been thinking, Sassy? Yeah? That, that's crazy. Don't be talking like that. Come on, you know what I'm facing. I'm getting old, I'm sick. If this case goes against me, my life will be as good as over anyway. But Dad, don't be thinking like this. It's horrible. I could have just walked to the edge and jumped. I thought about it, you know. Of course I thought about it. Would have been the easy way out of all this, wouldn't it? Well, you stop talking like this. You're starting to scare me. I keep going back in my mind. How did I get in this situation? It's a nightmare, a total mess. There's a young lad dead, and I'm facing the rest of my life in prison. And our life used to be so simple. Look at this. That's you two when our Tony was still with us. That was taken the Christmas after I'd been made redundant. Redundant, eh? <laughs> I thought that was the end of the world. Look at me now. I was happy, though. It seemed like nothing could touch us. There were happy, innocent times. Why can't things stay like that, eh? Why did you two have to grow up? It's just like time rushes on and on. I mean, you're still young, but you'll see. Now you've got little ones of your own, you'll see that once kids come along, the time just goes faster and faster. It only seems five minutes since I took that snap. And it seems like seconds since little Beth was born. And Harry. And things just change so quickly as well. Do you remember how I kicked off at you when I thought you were having an affair with Max? I hated the fella. He's my son-in-law now. Look, Dad, I know you feel like talking, but we've got to get you back to court by half ten. If you don't make it, things are going to be 20 times worse. I don't need to go back. Don't start that stupid talk again. No, I don't mean like that, Jacqueline. That ferry boat to Ireland has been in and out. I could have been there by now, you know. I could have just gone to Dublin and disappeared. That is just stupid. Up from where I'm standing, Jacqueline. Look, Dad, I know why you're thinking like that. And normally, I'd be right there with you, I'd be on the ferry and everything. But come on, you're not thinking straight. And say you did get off. How long do you think you'd last on the run like some criminal? They'd track you down, they'd bring you back, and everything could be worse. It can't get any worse, son. Can't you understand that? This is it. I'm facing life. My own life is rushed by, and I get life. Time, they call it, don't they? Hey? So will my life stop rushing past now? Will, will time get slower? Doing time, I feel like that's it now. My own life has been a waste, and the rest of it has got to drag like I've lived a thousand years because I've been locked away from the only thing that ever meant anything to me, my own kids. Well, if that's how you feel, why do you want to walk out on us? Go on, Dad, tell me. Because I've got no chance with that jury. Don't be soft. They're listening. They're seeing this diminished responsibility that your barrister's been on about. You know, what you've been through. Dad, they're ordinary people. They are imagining how they'd feel if Robbie Moffat had sent psychos round to terrorise and torture them in their own home. Yeah, and they've been listening to that scum Moffat bleating like I'd shot bloody Bambi. Yeah, but they've only got Robbie's way for that. And he's a missus, he's a burglar. Some house-breaking no more. Who says that Clint isn't a burglar? 
or, or even a scumbag, a psycho. He, he could have been in on terrorising us from day one, for all we know, for all the jury knows. It's just the way that the truth gets twisted by them lawyers. But there's one thing that they can't twist, and that is that you're a respectable, middle-aged family man with your own business. Who would them offer to say rubbish? Who do you think they'll believe, Dad? Jacqueline, I got a gun and I killed the lad, remember? Yeah, but you had no choice. Dad, they'll believe you. I don't want to go back to that dock. Oh, Dad, but how will it look if you run away? The jury will think what anyone would. Dixon's guilty. He executed that lad in cold blood, so now he's done one. He's not on but a murderer. Well, right, Pops. Are you going to let that happen? And what are we going to tell Harry and Beth? You know, when they're older, that their granddad was, was a coward. You know, he wouldn't face up to scum like the Moffats. You've got to take your chances in court. Are you really going to let a piece of filth like Robbie Moffat win? I know I should, Michael, but it's the prison. Look, if they let me go free, they could carry me shoulder high down a parade, but I've already pleaded guilty to getting a stone off shotgun. That, it's only a minor charge. You can get seven years for it. And I couldn't cope with seven days in jail, never mind years. You weren't in that remand centre, Michael. I did my best to handle it, but it was hell. I'd die in a real jail. But it's your first offence. You've never been in trouble with the police before. You've got a good record, you're a respectable father and grandfather. And, Dad, the judge knows you've had a nightmare since Moffat broke in. That'll be punishment enough, you'll see. That'll be their attitude. I'm not soft, son. I read the papers. I've seen them send people to jail for carrying guns. So why don't you put your faith in British justice? You've talked about it often enough. Because I'm still facing a prison sentence. Yeah, I know you didn't kill Clint on purpose. You were scared out of your mind. You could say it was some kind of payback. It might even make you feel better for taking his life. What are you saying, Jackie? No, listen to me. But if you are found guilty, if you do get life, you know that me and Mike are working night and day to get an appeal together to get you out. You know that, don't you, Dad? But if you run away, go on. You get on that ferry boat and disappear if you really want to. But if you do that, I won't want to know you. And I don't think I'll make will respect you for it either. I don't want a dad who's some guilty coward who can't face up to it when it gets tough. That's not the dad we know and love. Do you understand? You're not going to get on that ferry boat, Dad, are you? Dad? <sighs> what would I do without you two, eh? You okay, Dad? Yeah. You taking your tablets? No need to ask, of course I have. I will be all right, you know. I know. Let's um, go to the garage. I heard. Look, love, um... About that stuff before, um... I'm sorry. It's okay. All the years in this house... You know, you, me, Carrie, our wills. And now you go. Make a change to her, innit? All that stuff you said about Carly and her school, and I know you were right. Just frightened of missing her, that's all. Over emotional old fool, eh? I don't want us to miss each other. I want us to see each other as often as we can. And I'm sure Mum will let you bring Wills up to Newcastle as well. That'll be brilliant. You've got to go, Dad. There's no rush. You don't want to turn up a court looking like a tramp, do you? I'll be there, love. Anthea's desperate for you to get home. She feels terrible about what happened yesterday. Go home and see her. After what she did? I don't care what she did, what she said. It doesn't matter. You what? Well, but what she said. I don't care. Forget it. Forget all this legal stuff. Forget all this five seconds before I fired rubbish. 
I had a right to defend my family, and that's why I got that gun. I'm 50 years of age with a heart condition, and I'd had weeks of it. When I saw that lad in my house, I knew that my wife and my little granddaughter were in terrible danger, and I was bloody terrified. That's why I killed that scumbag. And I've done nothing wrong. I knew my family were at risk, and I defended them against people who were stronger than me. I have nothing to be ashamed of. I was right. I don't regret what I did. It saved me family, and it saved me. Pity me own wife couldn't see that, eh? The very first time we sat down and talked about what happened, I knew she wasn't behind me. The first time I asked her for help in court, she hesitated. I should have realised then what I realise now. It's obvious. She doesn't love me. Well, not enough, anyway. You might as well know, this marriage is finished. Over. Let's get going, shall we? Over my dead body, you will. Listen, no one goes in my house without my permission. Now go on, on your bike. Let's get this not in the taxi or you'll miss your train, eh? Come on, Kyle's. He took a gun and the law into his own hands. And that next Brookside is next tonight. Another great double here on four, Richard and Judy, live at five tomorrow afternoon. Rachel, I'm fine. Well, I will be when I get my dad back in that dock again. Look at the time. Dad, it's gone 25 to you. Will you get a move on? And Andy has been really upset. I try not to be so nasty to her. So what? He's gonna bin it. You are? He told me and Jackie at the ferry terminal before. He said the marriage is over. No! Well, can you blame him after what she's done? But she did what she could, and she's really sorry. It's too late to be sorry. She got it wrong. I need to eat. I need to talk to you in private. And I've got to get to court. You're not even dressed. I'm trying to get a shave, aren't I? Please, Ron, you haven't even told me what you've been doing all night. Thinking. Just get a move on, will you, Dad? Why won't you talk to me? Who the hell's that? Who did they think they are trying to lock my flaming front door down? Don't open it. It might be one of Robbie Moffat's mates. There's nothing he can do to me now. Hi, I one knock would have been good enough. What are you trying to do, wake the dead? Mr. Dixon? Yes? North Merseyside Securities. You're in default on your loan. I think you made a mistake, pal. I've got the wrong fella. I don't owe anybody anything. Uh, Michael and Rachel Dixon, number eight, Brookside Close. It's me there after that. With interest, you owe us uh, £5,230, repayable immediately. 5000 quid. The payments haven't been kept up. The balance owing plus interest is repayable on demand. Dad, I didn't want to tell you that. Michael, you owe £5,000. How did you get into that kind of debt? We tried to keep up the payments, but we couldn't manage. I'm sorry, Dad. Are you in a position to pay this off? Well, how can we? Right. Then we'd better take a look inside. Hey, hey. <laughs> what do you think you're playing at? He's in default on a loan from us. We've got the right to take goods and possessions to the equivalent sum. I'll see what we can take, and we'll collect it later. Over my dead body, you will. Listen, no one goes in my house without my permission. Now go on, on your bike. 
if your son can't pay now, we've no alternative. Yeah, well, I don't give a toss what you say. You're not setting foot in there. Ron, stop it. Don't get wound up. I'm not having some money lender trying to get in my house. In that case, Mr Dixon can give us our money. Look, I can give you a cheque for £100 this week and then try and catch up next month. I mean, surely we can come to some sort of arrangement. <laughs> Sorry, Mr Dixon, it's too late for that. Shall we step inside? Hey, I've told you, haven't I? This is my house. He only lives here. And he obviously can't afford to pay you, so I suggest you get back in that car and you get out of here, all right? Hang on. You've been in the papers. Aren't you the fellow that's up for shooting that burglar? Correct. So you know exactly my attitude to people trying to get in my house, don't you? We have the legal right to take property in lieu of the money. No way. What's going on? This is a serious situation. We need some cooperation. How Michael owes this lot £5,000? Because he didn't keep up payments. You're joking. I didn't want it to come to this. Yeah, and now this fella wants to take my furniture and lure payments. Well, I've told you, sunshine, no way you're not on. You're not getting in there. Will you tell him to stop getting so wound up? He won't listen to me. This is down to our mic. Dad, come on, go inside. Let him deal with it. Jacqueline, he's not to set foot in this house, do you? Perhaps we can get somewhere now. What authority have you got to take away his possessions? Leave it to me, Max, please. Look, can't you tell your boss I'll sort something out? I mean, can't we extend the uh, long period or something? I told you, it's too late for that. We want the money or goods to that sum. Do you have a court order? <sighs> It'd be better if you kept out of this. It'd be better for you if I did, but I'm not. Do you have a relevant court order? <sighs> we don't need any court order. I'm afraid you do. Yes, you need a special warrant issued by a county court before you can claim possessions. Perhaps we could see it? We've got the authority. Don't worry yourself about that. Perhaps then I should call the police. They'll advise us who's right and who's wrong. Shall I do that now? OK. We'll leave it for today. But we'll be back in touch, Mr Dixon. Thanks, Max. Well, that doesn't mean they won't be able to get a court order. Well, right interfering in our business. I feel so ashamed. What are we going to do now? Calm down. Don't I have enough on me plate without all of this? If I hadn't been here, you know, that pair of bog rats could have been off with my furniture. It's all my responsibility, not yours. Dad, come on, we're supposed to go to court. Listen, bad debts get listed to addresses, you know. He's probably blacking my name. My credit status will be zero. Well, that's the least of your troubles. Th hadn't we better get going? Look, Dad, um, I'm sorry about that. I'll, I'll sort all that out. How are you? Do you know what? I can't believe that you got yourself into this mess. I thought you were meant to be educated. Did you know about this? I, uh... Anthea helped us to pay an instalment, but we did pay her back. Oh, really? Didn't hear about that one, did I? You know, the fellow who's always accused of keeping things to himself. It wasn't like that. Listen, I'm glad them pair of shysters came round, and I'll tell you why. You see, I am facing a jail sentence in the next day or so, and I was going to put you in charge of the business. But no way, not now. You see, I thought the extra few bob might come in handy, but you, you'd have me bankrupt inside a week. Dad, I can do that. We can do that. That might get us out the lumber that we're in. Yeah, well, I'm not soft. Listen, love, if the worst comes to worst, you'll have to look after great grannies. Me? Jackie's got two children and a business of her own. Where do I fit into all this? I happen to work for great grannies and all. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, but not now, Andy. I'll look at the time. We've got to get to court. I'll get the car. Come on. Do we have to go now? I've got loads to do before I start my new job, you know. I wanted to go to school today. I want to say goodbye to everyone. I'm sorry, love. We have to go, but you will see them again soon. I promise. Can't Grandad come? I'm sorry, but he can't. I won't like it if Grandad's not there. Yes, you will. And he'll come and see us loads, and we'll come and see him. Now, come on. Go and get your bags and see how much of that stuff you can fit in. Oh, 
Are you sure you're going to be OK? All this talk about grotty flats. I said the grottiest flat in the best part of Newcastle. Yeah, but it's a big step, love. I know. What's happening? It's all right. Thank God the judge is running late. Look, they don't know about Ron, you know. The solicitor said it was gone again to be dad good style if he got here after the judge turned up. What a morning. It's all our fault. The men coming round. Mr. Dixon was really upset. Don't blame yourself, love. Well, it wasn't fair on him. Not today, of all days. No, you need to get a solicitor. Things will only get worse if they well, don't. Just leave it to us, will you, Max? Just a suggestion. All those involved in the Crown versus Dixon, court three, please. What's up? I've got to do something about this loan. I mean, that made me feel about this big before. And in front of Jackie and him, he made me feel useless. You can't stop supporting him now. Not after everything he's done to help us. Of course I'll support him. He could have just been a bit more understanding, that's all. I mean, we're deep in debt with a toddler to support. This is our crisis and it's screwing us up. Yeah, well, there's nothing we can do about it now. We'll have to wait after the trial. Come on, we better get in. You go in. I'm going to ring the citizen's advice. Shouldn't you be ringing a solicitor like Max says? Oh, never mind what Max says. He might be old enough, but he's not me dad. And anyway, I'm not made of money like him. I have to be the CAB. It's an adventure, isn't it? I'm going to find somewhere new to live. New school, new friends. But you're not coming. Well, not today, no. But you try and keep me away once you're settled. You'll be able to show me your new school and everything, won't you? And you can ring me up whenever you like, can't you, Mum? Of course you can. Yeah, M.A. We can write to each other, can't we? Hey, if we get a computer, we can keep in touch with Grand up by email. Yeah, just like I showed you on my computer. Do you remember? Yeah. Hey, and we can get those webcam things, and then we can see each other on our computers. How about that? <laughs> See, it won't be as bad as you think, love. We'll be able to talk to each other every day. Be a new life for you. It's gonna be brilliant. Wish I was coming with you. Why don't you come? I can't, love. I hate to thought, Dad. I mean, Newcastle's not short of pub work. Will you come, Grandad? I can't, love. This is your big chance. You don't want an old scally like me hanging round, do you? Why are you crying, Grandad? He's um, just a bit upset, that's all, love. Being on his own, a bit of... Shall I leave Mr Stripes here to look after him? Yeah, it's a good idea. There you go. Mr Stripes will look after you. Thanks, love. You've heard all manner of evidence about ballistics and bloodstains. But the most important point in this whole case is the question of reasonable force. In the event of a stranger entering your home uninvited, you have the option of using reasonable force to eject him if all else fails. I think you'll agree in this case that the amount of force that was used was totally unreasonable. Excessive beyond reason. Moreover, young Clinton Moffat was not even given the chance to explain himself or the option to flee the house at Brookside Close to which he had gone on this errand of mercy. In a vicious and totally cold-blooded manner, Ronald Dixon shot dead a quiet, and sensitive young man whose whole life was in front of him. In a moment of viciousness and with a clear idea of what he would do, he deliberately went back upstairs and fetched the shotgun. No, he did not call the police, as any reasonable householder would have done when faced with an intruder. He took a gun and the law into his own hands, deliberately and with intent he murdered an unarmed, innocent man. What did they say 
Private Citizen's advice? Nothing. I've got an appointment with them in the morning, and they said they're going to ring Northwest Securities and talk to them, so... I'm tired. What do you expect after the drug on her took in there? You wouldn't even look at me in there. Daddy, you come for something to eat? I'll catch you up, son. Well, me and Rich are going to go down the road for a butty. It's cheaper. And we won't have to talk to Lord and Lady Farnham. I know I made a mess of it yesterday. I'm sorry. I promise I'll back you all the way from now on. Well, that's easy to say, isn't it? Now the art bit's over. For you, anyway. Please, don't be like this. I know I let you down badly, but... I'm sorry. It wasn't your fault, it was mine. And I don't blame you for not being behind me 100 per cent, for making a mess of it. It was too big a thing to ask. I wish I could have done it better, what you asked me to. No, it was too much. It's the sort of thing you only expect of someone who loves you. I do love you. If you love me, I mean really love me, you wouldn't have thought twice about lying for me in there. You know I love you. Well, maybe you do, but not enough. No. It's true. And if I'd have known all them months ago what I know now, I'd never have asked you to lie for me. I'd have taken me chances. Because our marriage can't work anymore. It doesn't now, and it didn't then. Only I was too soft to realise it. What are you saying? We're finished, Anth. Whatever happens in this place, me and you. It's over. I'm getting coat on. Taxi will be here in a minute. We should get a move on. The train's a quarter to. Yeah, oh, love. You need some sweets, don't you, eh? And something to read on the train. Thanks, Granddad. Oh, you're welcome. Hey, and don't forget to ring us when you get there, will you? Hey? And I want a postcard in Newcastle to stick on the fridge. You won't forget, will you? No. And if it's not here by next week, you're going to be in bother. And I want it in your best writing and your best spelling, otherwise you'll have to do it again. Yeah, we'll do that tomorrow, won't we, love? Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've just thought, you know that Mrs Carroll one in school, the one you don't like? You won't ever, ever have to see her again. What a result, eh? <laughs> ah, the smile! <laughs> I could have. Oh. oh, and don't be worrying. Mr Stripes here will be looking out for me. Right, uh, taxi. Come on, love. We'll get you back together. This is it then. Hello. Yeah. I'll take these. Let's get this not in the taxi or you'll miss your train, eh? Come on, Kyles. After your mum for me, baby. Oh. Dad, we better get going. <sighs> Go on. You missed that train. Go on. I love you. <sighs> Bye, Dad. Bye, Granddad. See you, kid. Wave goodbye to your granddad. This isn't right. You're not thinking straight. I spent all last night thinking. But you're under such pressure. You've had to live with stress for months. You're confused. No, you're wrong. I've got it all clear in my mind. And it's you under pressure. Because I put you there. I wanted you to stand in that witness box and lie for me. 
And I should have realised that you couldn't go through with it. But all along, I was just kidding myself that you would do it. You see, our marriage was over the minute that I doubted your loyalty. I should have told you that months ago. I tried. Yeah, I know you did, love, but I shouldn't have expected it. We're not right for each other. <laughs> We've known each other over 20 years. Yeah, and we didn't see each other for 17 of them. And now we've had three years trying to make a marriage that was never meant to be. The minute we met, we were drawn to each other, you know that. I was a maintenance fitter. You were the girl in the wages office. We had an affair. Every other Friday and every Wednesday night. It lasted 18 months. That's all there was in it. I went back to Dee Dee, you went back to Jeff. When I say went back, we never left them, did we? I knew it was years before we bumped into each other again, but well, the feelings were still there, weren't they? What feelings? Lust. Wishing that we could go back in time because we were both middle-aged by then. It was something like that mixed with loneliness on both sides, if you'd ask me. Your Jeff had died. Megan was off trying to build a career. I'd lost Edie because I'd shacked up with Bev. <laughs> Even that had gone down the tubes. We were both given a second chance. It was fate. Well, I don't believe in fate. You build your life with the choices you make. What I just said, it seduced us into making a big mistake. You're a lovely woman, but you shouldn't be here. Look, I don't believe that. But we went through some ups and downs, but without all this, our marriage would have been fine. And we can't say what might happen. As far as I'm concerned, it hasn't passed its first proper test. And that's why I want you to walk away now. I can't accept that. You're just saying this because you think you're going to prison for a long time. If you want to continue this conversation, it should be after the verdict. Anthea, I'm sorry, love, but this marriage is over, whether I go down or not. That's the whole point. Please don't end it like this. Let's leave any decisions till later when there's time to talk. Please, Ron. No. I've made up my mind and nothing's going to change it. So just walk away now. No! I don't want you wasting any more of your life staying with me. No. I'm going nowhere doing nothing till it's all over. I'm releasing you from something that you shouldn't be in. Don't you understand that? I killed a lad and you will never, ever forget it, whatever happens. I'm giving you the chance to make a new life. I'm staying. Well, I don't want you here. I'm going downstairs to report him. You can't stop me from going in that courtroom. I'm sorry, but I want you to stay away. Is Mr. Dixon the respectable, reasonable citizen he has tried to project? Or is he someone completely different? He lets slip in his evidence his opinion of the police service. It would appear that he doesn't hold them in the same high regard that many of us do. Did this attitude towards the police prompt him to get the sawn off gun? Is he a reasonable, respectable citizen? Or a man so arrogant and contrary that not having instant results from the ensuing police investigation, he decided to take the law into his own hands and get a gun. And did he then think that if there was any further intrusion into his home, he would have no need of the police because he had a gun? In some gung-ho state of mind, did he think that whomsoever may transgress against him in the future, there would be no match for him and his sawn-off shotgun. Just a moment. 
Mr. Westbrook. Mr. Dixon, are you feeling all right? I can't breathe. Ron! <laughs> Dad! Dad, use your spray! Ron, where's your spray? Ron. Let me get to him! Where's the spray? Ron! Is it all right? Hurry up, do something! Dad! Tasha, call an ambulance. Dad! Dad! <laughs> Come as soon as I could. <laughs> you bitch. Are you happy Clint died for nothing? It's not like that. Can you laugh at me? Hey. Oh, Katie, stop it! Stop it. Brookside will be back at 8.30 on Friday. Next tonight, Elaine's surfing for love and John's lost his groove in the first of an Alan McBeal double. Oh, sorry. Where's my dad? He's upstairs. How was he? When did he get out of the hospital? About ten o'clock last night. He's very tired. Well, thank God it wasn't a heart attack, eh? Yeah. How are you, Pops? Oh, I'm sure it won't be the last angina attack that I have. I'll get you some tea. Come on, us to make me own tea, thanks. You sleep all right? Not bad. Well, what did the doctor say? What brought it on? Uh. Being on trial for murder and realising that your marriage is a non-starter. It all helps. Oh, and, uh, deck collectors knocking me door down. That'll do it. Oh. Do you ever been so glad I'd pray for Aunt Dixon to die? Stop this. You're destroying yourself. I want justice. He's not dead. I want to get life. Well, what about you, eh? You're not eating, you're drinking yourself stupid. Your body won't take much more, you know. You can get counselling through the centre, you know that. Yeah, yeah. Come up. I'm serious. Should I arrange something? No, just keep up my business. As soon as I could. You told us to come, didn't you? <sighs> well, you won't listen to me, and I was worried about you. You need somebody more than me. Who else could I ask except your own sister? I couldn't let you go through this on your own. I'll stay as long as you need me. I don't need anyone. I'm fine. Oh, shh. Sh come on. It's OK. Everything's going to be fine. I'm here now. I'm here for you. You should be trying to get some sleep. We want this long stuff sorted out, don't we? Yeah, but, Mike... I'm going down to Citizen Advice this morning, so... Have you got the monthly outgoings and stuff I asked you to dig out? Yeah. I know I'm going to be late for court, but I can't risk them fellas coming round here again. Yeah. Do you think I should come as well? No, you just look after me dad, please. Any brekkie cereal? Uh, yeah, in, in that cupboard. Oh. You took your time getting here, didn't you? Yeah, well, you did kind of call out the blue. You knew how worried I was about her. Should have seen her last night. She was in a right state. Yeah, well, you leave it to me, eh? You've got to try and stop her being so bitter about all this, Sammy. Wanting revenge on the Dixons is just doing her no good at all. And drinking herself into oblivion doesn't help either. I'll talk to her, OK? Yeah. Well, thanks for coming. It's good to see you. No, you did the right thing calling me. I'd better get to work. 
Um, it's OK if I stay here for a while, isn't it? Uh, is there nowhere else you could stay? Well, I could book a hotel in town, but the thing is, I think I need to keep a close eye on our Kate. Don't you? Mm, yeah, I suppose so. I'll see you later. Cheers, Niche. You can't end a marriage like this. It's ridiculous. I know you hurt. I know it's hard for you to handle the way I'm thinking, but it's what I want. And I'm thinking of you, not me. I mean, look at me. Chronic heart condition, facing a jail sentence. I'm no good to you. You're healthy, you're, you're full of life. You're an attractive woman. You can do better without me. You've got a future. If I go now, I'll look like the most callous woman in the world. Well, I won't be saying that. And if we're both happy about it, then it's fine. But I love you. Anthea, please. Don't make it harder for yourself. Just walk away. Now. Today. Oh, where the hell do I go? Oh, this is your house. I've got nowhere. You can stay here. I'm going down, aren't I? You can stay here. You'll have plenty of time to find somewhere. I don't want this. I want to stay with you. And I want you to find a better life. That's what I really want. How is he? If you love me, you'd try. You'd try and make it work. I can't do this, love. I just can't do it. Hi, Darcy. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be, yeah. We can't leave things like this. I have to go to court. I'll come with you. No, love. Oh, this is madness. You're not giving me a chance. Jackie, will you wait for me in the car, please? Right. Told you. I've said everything that is to be said, and I don't want you in the court today. You need me. No. I need people who support me 100%. <laughs> You're not totally behind me. You hate what I did. You know that as well as I do. I know. But it doesn't make it any easier. I feel like I'm deserting you. I wish I could have done what you wanted. Doesn't matter now. I'll have to go, all right? Bye. <sighs> I'm sorry it ended up like this. Good luck, eh? You used to be here. Well, you don't think I'd let my little sister face this on her own, do you? Nisha shouldn't have interfered. Yeah, well, it's a good job she did. You're not yourself. I'm all right. You're not. You need support. I mean, I didn't realise you were in such a mess the last time I saw you. I know I've got commitments, but it have been here like a shot. I don't need you, dear. You do. And Nisha said it's OK to stay as long as necessary. That's all right with you, isn't it? I suppose so. the cat's dragged in. Moral support. She must be desperate. What's Max Farnham doing here? He hates romantics. He's married to Jackie. Married? Shh. You're joking. Why didn't you tell me? Hey, I'm Max. <laughs> Amazing. Are you ready to proceed, Mr Westbrook? May it please your honour, I understand from my learned friend that Mr. Dixon has been past fit to continue. It is gratifying to see that he has made such a remarkably swift recovery from the dramatic events of yesterday. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, will you please cast back your minds to the evidence of Mrs. Anthea Dixon. 
And then came the moment of the fatal shot. Mrs. Dixon said her husband allowed five seconds after shouting, get out or I'll shoot. I pressed her, if you recall. I counted out the five seconds and asked if that was how long her husband had allowed before pulling the trigger. I ask you, how sure was she? It seemed like it, she told you. It seemed like it. How convincing was her testimony? By her own account, she didn't know her husband had acquired a sawn-off shotgun. Do you truly believe that was the case? She quite obviously lied when she said her husband gave adequate warning of the killing shot. Despite her denial in evidence, who says she didn't know of this gun before the arrival of Clinton Moffat? Who can say she didn't conspire later with her husband to concoct this case of self-defense against a background of so-called diminished responsibility? Put yourself in Ron Dixon's place. Imagine the terror that he and his family had been put through. Imagine what drove a normal, middle-aged family man to acquire illegally a sawn-off shotgun. You have heard the evidence of the forensic psychiatrist. He has told you of the state of mind of Ron Dixon at the time of the killings. He and his family had been tied up, rendered powerless and humiliated in burglaries instigated by one, if not two, of the Moffat brothers. As the psychiatrist has said, Mr. Dixon was anxious, irritable, and depressed after previous burglaries. He was in such a state that a door banging or a, a, a sudden noise would frighten the life out of him. Put yourself in his place that night. After weeks of fear, and then there's the, the, the nerve-shredding display of mayhem a few doors away. Yobs kicking at his door. Threats of violence. Not for the first time. Remember Robbie Moffat's chilling statement. You're dead. And then again, that night in bed with his wife. His baby granddaughter asleep in the adjacent room. Is it any wonder he snapped? How would you have felt? I still can't believe it. When did they get Imagine hitched? his terror. In the summer. He went downstairs to investigate a noise to find a man in the house. Imagine that moment of fear and panic brought on by the unbearable experiences of the previous weeks. Make no mistake, Ron Dixon was driven to his terrible actions. In his fear and his confusion, he killed in self-defense and in the defense of his family. You have also heard the psychiatrist say that my client is no callous killer. He has shown genuine remorse for the loss of this young life. At the time of the incident, he did not hesitate to call the police to account for his actions. That Ladies and gentlemen, is not the action of a cold-blooded murderer. You must weigh very carefully the evidence of Anthea Dixon and Robbie Moffat. It's understandable that Mrs. Dixon should support her husband, but was she mistaken or misguided in her evidence that an adequate warning was given before the shot was fired? As for the testimony of Mr. Moffat, he risked prosecution by admitting he was at the scene of a burglary. Now, it's understandable he should want to find justice for his dead brother, but we have no evidence, nor any witness who saw him at the scene of the shooting. These are matters for you to decide. Ladies and gentlemen, you must go away and consider your verdict in the light of the evidence you've heard. Court will adjourn.
I'm going out for a walk. No, Dad. Don't worry, love. I'm not going to run away again if that's what you think. That's a good idea. Breath of fresh air will do him good. Jackie and I will come with you. Anything to get away from this place. Can't go too far, though. Just out of the front. Um, I believe congratulations is in order. Sammy, come on. Sorry? You and Jackie get married. I only found out today. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, thanks. Mm. It's funny how things turn out, isn't it? Gee, cow. Come on, Dad. They said it's best if it goes to a court case. Oh, I'm not more sitting in this place. No, it won't be like that. It's the county court. It's much smaller. So what we do is we let North Merseyside Securities take us to court for the money, right? And then a judge will make a payment and order us to pay it off at less than the monthly instalments. Can they do that? Well, that's what she said. I mean, she even rang North Merseyside and made them an offer based on the figures that you did for me. And what did they say? Well, they refused it. And that's why we've got to admit the claim and go to the county court. It's just like Jimmy said, and hopefully the judge will accept our offer or make us pay something less. Sounds too good to be true. Well, at least it stops people knocking at our door trying to take our stuff. Are you sure? Yeah. Well, can we get blacklisted or something? <sighs> well, that, that is the downside. I mean, well, we won't get any credit until all the debt is paid off. Oh, and that could take years. Well, at least we're getting somewhere. Will you stop worrying? Yeah, we're still skinned. <sighs> I know. The woman at the CAB said we should have applied for family tax credits. We could have got 50 quid a week. What do you mean, could have? <laughs> we earn too much to qualify. <sighs> what? Earn too much? It's a joke, innit? I'm so scared. What if your dad and Anthea split up? I mean, what if he does go to prison? We can't afford to run that house on our own. Can't leave the building. I thought I was supposed to be on bail. They're ready, they're coming back in. I'll let you all know when to come back in. Good luck, Dad. Fingers crossed, eh, Pops? Good luck, Ron. Oh, very quick for the jury coming back. Was that good or bad? I'm not sure, but I thought his barrister put, his, uh, put it across very well. Talk to the jury on their level, it might just give your dad the benefit of the doubt. I hope so. All those involved in the Crown versus Dixon, call me, please. Hello? Can I have a cab to Lime Street Station, please? As soon as possible, please. It's number eight, Brookside Close, Manor Park. Thanks. Have you reached a verdict on both counts? We have. Are your verdicts unanimous? Yes. On the charge of murder, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. It's not fair. On the second count of manslaughter, how do you find the defendant? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Yes! <laughs> no! Uh, Mr Dixon, please remain standing. The jury may stay. Uh, Mr Dixon, you have pleaded guilty to two charges. The first, of possessing a shotgun without a certificate. The second, that you were in illegal possession of a prohibited weapon, namely a shotgun with a shortened barrel. Mr. Dixon, the court has heard that you are a man of previous good character, a father and a husband and a grandfather, a respected figure in your community. However, the number of people appearing in these courts week after week for the illegal possession of firearms is steadily increasing. Your reasons for acquiring the firearm in question have been made plain, but you have broken the law. Unfortunately, in your case, the firearm was used with tragic results, and the young man is dead. I accept that you are a man with an unblemished record, but this is a serious offence. Unfortunately, I have no choice but to impose a custodial sentence. 
On the first charge, you will go to prison for nine months. No. On the second charge, you will go to prison for nine months. The sentence is to be served concurrently. Take him down. The court will rise. Nine months. You can't send them down for nine months. I'll kill him. This is crazy. He should have been fine. That'd be right, not this. I mean, nine months. Is that all my clips is worth? Max, I can't believe me. Dad's going to prison. I've got to go and see him. You go and see the solicitor. See if you can talk to your dad, yeah? Okay. We've got to appeal over this. I should be seeing the solicitor. You're wasting your time. You what? Look, your father was facing life and now he's got nine months. Think I want him out, Max. We've got to appeal. No, we haven't. Look, nine months, you're talking he'll be in for four months. We're talking 16 weeks. Now, we can get him through that as a family. I don't care how long he's going to be in. It's wrong. No, Max, he's right. It's up to us. He won't be in that long. Don't worry. We'll look after him. And how are we going to do that? He's banged up. Max, it's a disaster. Try and stay calm. Look, as I say, we'll get him through it together as a family. United. Love, it's all right. Dad, I don't want you to go away. I have to, Jack. I have to, love. Oh, do you think you're going to be OK? Well, I've got to be, haven't I? Well, we're all behind you. And we'll do everything we can to get you through it. I know, love, I know. I mean it. Anything we can do. Listen. I want you to look after that business for me till I get out, do you hear? I didn't want to lumber you, but... Oh, my God. It'll be fine, Dad. Don't worry. You'll be fine with me. And keep an eye on our mic, won't you, and Rachel? And the little ones? Yeah, you know I will. And Maxie, you make sure that he looks after you. Well, I'll have him when I get out. What about Cynthia? Now we're finished. I've let her go. Isn't there anything you can do to get her back? No, love, it's over. All I want now is my kids. As long as I know that I've got you up behind me, I'll be fine. We're going to keep things running smoothly until Ron gets out. I can help Jackie with great grannies if needs be. We can do that. I think your father made things perfectly clear. Got enough problems of your own. That's all getting sorted, Max. Mike, you're doing 12-hour shifts. You've got enough on your plate as it is. Don't worry about great grannies or anything. Please, just, just leave it to me. How is he? Well, he's still in shock, but he's doing his best. Oh, that's good. Come on, let's get you home, eh? Yeah. You bitch! Maybe you happy Clint died for nothing. It's not like that. Don't you laugh at me! Hey! hey Katie, stop, stop it! it. Yeah. You should all be jailed for life. You should rock it. Yes, you, you, you should all be locked up. I'm getting a solicitor. I want a retrial. I am sick of this. Yeah, well, he did get away with murder, and you can keep out to me. You've got to learn to let go. Clint is dead, but my dad's been tried and acquitted, and that's the law. And that's the way things work. So just let go and get on with your life, Katie. Because it's over. It's not over. Not for me. I am not being chased to justice. Come on. Come on. Can you believe it? He said Dixon wasn't guilty for murder. Not even for manslaughter. Any way from on, dear? No. And I wouldn't care if I never heard from here again. Get this number to Jerome. There's a bar job going at the bingo hall. <laughs> the bingo hall? Mel's back. What's he done? You patronising cow. Well, I'm only trying to help you. Again. Ow! That next Brookside is a double bill on Wednesday at 8 o'clock. Well, next on four, Chandler and Monica are getting married, so prepare for the big bing bash.
Do us a favour. Bin this. Mountain's run's released date. Yeah. You're gonna have to work, eh? She's in safe hands. See you later. Can you believe it? He said Dixon wasn't guilty for murder. Not even for manslaughter. I mean, fellas get long for strapping in pups. He's got off scot free. And where's the sense? Where's the justice in that? Yeah, but he's not a free man walking the streets yet, though, is he? I mean, according to the paper, he's got four and a half months. Four and a half months? Well, what happened tonight? Oh, come on. What about me? Well, just try and keep your chin up and hold your job down, eh? He's got 18 weeks. A quick slap on the wrist and what have I got? A lifetime of feeling like this, having no one. You've got me. And I say, put your lippy on well, and just... his family, his wife and his grandkids have got just enough time to order the welcome home party food. And I bet your auntie's already blown up the balloons now. I've lived for this child, Sammy. It's what's kept me going. All these months I've been playing the verdict over and over in my head. The thought of Dixon's face when he got sent down for life. But didn't that know I expected? I don't think I'm ever going to get over that. Don't you ever stop. Oh, I've got to catch up for that day I took off last week. Day off? Yeah. The students in the Red Rally, me and Jay went on it. If you didn't go on demonstrations, you wouldn't get so behind with your work. Yeah, and if Blair had abolished tuition fees, I'd have more time on my degree and less time pulling pints. I don't know what glam are you going? I'm going to the bingo with Bridget. Ten to nine? No, we're going Christmas shopping first. Make a day of it. I thought Anthea might be up for it, but she hasn't answered my message. We'll go knock round for her. I don't want them to think I'm being nosy. You know, just wanting the nitty-gritty of the trial. Poor things. I don't know how I'd cope if Ray went away for so long. Give her another ring, then. Nah. She'll phone me if she needs me. Is Jerome still in bed? Yeah. Nan, you know Jay's really skint at the moment. And? I mean, really strapped, and he feels bad. And I just wondered, because he um, be a little bit late with his keep this week. Just because he's a student, it doesn't mean he can't get a job, you know. So I know, then. Well, you work and study. Why can't he? <laughs> Have you heard anything? <sighs> At least we get to see him tomorrow. Got a visit notes through this morning. Good news about the release date, eh? But Mike, one month inside I could kill him. He's not tough enough, you know. I've been up most of the night thinking the worst. What if he gets beaten up? He won't. But these things happen, don't they? I've been going spare and all, thinking how scared he must be. You know, his face when he left the dock. What are we going to do? I just feel so helpless. I've been fiddling with this thing, but the last hours are trying to take my mind off it, but what's the point? Well, the point is to get on with it till he gets out. And that's what he wants to do, isn't it? He's a bit of kit, that. Yeah. Max has been after the DVD for ages. I've been trying to get on top of Great Granny's paperwork and all, but my head's been elsewhere. <sighs> Any word from Anthea? No. And I wouldn't care if I never heard from her again. Well, people have been phoning for a like, but I'll let her explain how she nearly finished me dad off. He must be heartbroken all the same. He does love her, you know. He's better off without her. He's gonna miss it when he gets back to his normal routine, though. When? When if? Ain't no ifs about it. But he might not last the distance. Oh, Jackie, come here. <laughs> oh, my. Look, he's not going to die in there, OK? Do you know Joanne's promised to train me up to be a stylist? Because she thinks the sun shines on my backside. Yeah? And what's the problem? Well, she'll only promote me after I've done my beauty course. And? And I sold it to Becky for 50 quid. What? It cost 500? We ran out of air at my party, so... I used it to buy more. It's not every day you're 18, is it? It's not every day you get promoted, is it? Where's your ambition, Emily? I wouldn't mind, but Becky neck most of the ale. Well, you can buy it back, or I'm telling me now. Tap your tin for it. 50 quid's not going to break the bank, surely, now he's working. Well, the thing is, this Chelsea one's offered Becky 150 quid for the course, which means that I'd have to offer her at least 100 to make it worth a while selling it back. No, she's your mate, isn't she? Exactly, so we don't want to diddle her. Hey! Will you 
you born in a barn? Oh, sorry. See you later. See ya. Yeah, later. I'm not knackered. Oh, tar. I'll say what you see. <laughs> it's because I've been slaving over that essay, the one I interviewed you about. I've still got to put a few more finishing touches to it, you know, at the library. But I reckon I'm heading for a 2-1, and it's all thanks to you. Oh, right, well, getting sectioned was worthwhile after all, eh? <laughs> You're going to get over this. How can I move on when no justice has been done? Yeah, well, fill your head with other stuff. Get on up and out. Ron got what he deserved, and now it'd make me feel better. Better than this, anyway. That jury couldn't even allow me one moment of satisfaction. Yeah, well, give yourself some space, Kate. I mean, don't think of the verdict. Just concentrate on getting over Clint. And how? Well, people do get over deaths. What about murders? Look, well, do you remember when my dad died? I mean, where was the sense in that? We were looking forward to his wedding. I ended up at his funeral. I mean, we thought we'd never stop grieving, thinking about him constantly, getting upset at odd moments. Do you still miss him? Yeah. Constantly? No. Some days I don't think about him. Yeah, well, when you do, do you still get upset? No, but... Well, same here. I just remember the good things about him. It's not the same. It is. It's about loss and coping. And we got over me, Dad, because we had each other. And you're going to get over this because you've got me. All right, son. Melvin's back. What's she done? Oh, it's all right. She never saw me. It doesn't matter if she does. The school's on to her. Everyone knows she's letting us nothing. Can I go home for a bit? And your mum's in work. Give us the keys, then. You can't sag. Oh, just for the morning. School's too important. I thought you had a play to practice anyway. I don't want to. Go out there, take a deep breath, and show her you're not bothered. Well, at least let me come back for my break. I mean, you can share your bickies with me, can't you? We're not on the same break. And you've got mates you can share your bickies with, haven't you? Yeah. Look, she's more scared than you. Why do you think she's been off for two weeks? Because she knows one step out of line and she's done for. Oh, damn thing. Don't let it get to you, Jack. I know, well, I should just be able to plug it into the hi-fi. A speaker must have blown or something. No, I meant me dad. Sorry. Wait, I'm just knackered. You know, the stress with me dad and Anthea and sorting the business. I'm looking after Harry and Emma. Tell me about it. Everywhere I look, stuff needs doing. Like the decorating for the start, that's got to be done by Christmas. It's hardly a priority, is it? I was hoping to watch a DVD this afternoon with the kids. Just relax for one hour. They were up most of the night with me. I suppose it was my fault. Oh, well, at least they're having a sleep in now. I wish I could have a sleep in. I've had no kip at all. Came straight in this morning to look after Beth while Rach went cleaning. And I've got to mind her till she finishes a bar shift at four. It's impossible. It'll get easier. That's what other parents tell me anyway. But Jack, we're really struggling. I just can't exist on this amount of sleep. And because we're brassic this month. Look, is there, um, is there any chance of a bit of help with the childcare? Oh, I would do, but three kids and one and great grannies. No, no. I meant the business paying for better to go to crash. Do you know, like Dad let us join the trial. Do you know what, Mike? It was in a few more months I could. Well, why not now? Well, because the business is in deficit. We've lost staff and contracts because of the stigma surrounding the trial. Look, I know you've hit a bit of a rough patch, but I just can't do it on my dad's behalf. Did you miss me? My dad's told Mrs Plummer, and, and she's going to tell your dad. And if you do anything, she can put you on report. Or get choked out, or even... <laughs> Trella. Uh. 
knew I was on borrowed time. Look, Jackie, I, I wouldn't normally ask, but our court summons came through this morning, so that means the debt case is next week. We should be sorted by then. We've just got to agree a repayment plan like the CAB advised us to. So you reckon you'll be on top of stuff by next week, then? Well, yeah, that's what the case is for. I mean, me and Rachel will only be paying back what we can afford, taking into account childcare costs. We'll be managing OK soon, it's just in the meantime. Well, I'll see if I can stretch to one week. I should be able to swing it somehow, but there's no way I can offer you any more, mate. Right. I'm putting all my efforts into making Great Granny's grace again. My dad's got to have something to look forward to when he gets out. Hey, see if you can get that thing going, I'll meet you the bussy. Have him. Call round to ask you the favour. No problem. Oh, let me get that. Stick the cat long, kidder. Yellow. Hi, Linz. You all right? Yeah, there's only bills, but I'll send them on to you. Listen, I've written you the letter, and I've sent our Cardi one of those chalky advent calendar things. Yeah, so she can count off the days till she sees Father Christmas. <laughs> no, go on. No, go on. Don't want to keep it. Listen, I'll put them in the post to you today. All right, love. Ta-da! 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 Ah, ta-da! <laughs> Here's a case, eh? Aw, oh, wonder if my dad ever lit up like that, you know, when I phoned him. Oh, I'm sure he did, love. Not when I phoned two in the morning stuck in town. <laughs> <laughs> Based on you. Got a hangover? Me. I should be so lucky. <laughs> It's the tabs I'm on. The lithium makes me go the loom more, so I have to drink more. Ah. Uh, are you getting on with them? Yeah, not bad, you know, even Stevens. How long are you going to take them for? Well, so long as I'm not banging down that door or howling at the moon, I'm not bothered. I'm fine, so I'm not thinking about it. In fact, I'm more than fine. My daughter's making something of herself, and this is year zero. <sighs> oh, thank you. Sorry, you're not boring me, honest. Been burning the candle at both ends, have you? Hey, you on the same shift as me tonight? Mm, I've got to grab the cash while I can. You see, me nan, she's complaining about Jane not having a job, so I'm subbing in. But I'm on this repayment plan, you know, for me tuition fees. It's over a grand. And if I don't make that, the uni are going to give me the boot. Oh, love. But I haven't said that right. Oh, lips are sealed. Listen, you'll be all right once you get this degree under your belt. Cash will come rolling then. You'll get head on to the lot. You reckon? Yeah. You make Bernie. She's had to drop out because of the stress and the debt. Actually, now you can tell me if you think I'm being cheeky using you for me work again. Or did you and Bernie? She gave me the idea, actually. Go on. Right, I've thought of my title for my next essay. Oh, you keep yourself busy, don't you? <laughs> Is it in the financial interest of pharmaceutical companies to create a drug culture which seeks to medicate away the legitimate pain people feel in their lives. Well, it's just the Bernie. My dad died recently. So they've given her antidepressants, you know, to cope. But the side effects are the jitters and sleeplessness. So they put on sleeping tabs and all, you know, to knock her out of a night. But, well, for it to function for his thing, and also to complement these antidepressants, they've had to put her on another um, SSRI drug, you know, serotonin. Been there, done them. That's not all because to handle looking after her mum who's in bits, well, she used to have these panic attacks. So they've given her Valium to pop before she gets home. Does she rattle when she walks here? She's on a cocktail of legal drugs. And they're probably more harmful than illegal drugs. And I bet they're all made by the same multinational. I mean, she hasn't got a minute in the day to tell how she really feels. She just wants space to to tell you. Look, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to get the lowdown on some of these companies off the net. You sure? Oh, I yeah, I'm well interested, aren't I? Listen, I am part and dependent on this scam, aren't I? Hey, and anything else you want to know about popping pills, I'm your man. You star. Tell you what, you can be my research and medication consultant. Oh, nice one, kidder. Sounds better than a pop man. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going? Looks that way. Are you okay? Like you really care. Hey. Early dart. I had to take half an hour off to walk him home. He's a wreck, cos that Amelda one's made a comeback. What's she done now? Is he OK? <sighs> Nothing to report. Well, I spoke to Plummer. Oh, well, if Jill's on the case, everything's OK. She got Amelda interviewed by an independent teacher. So that pupil support programme's actually kicked in? Come to a halt. 
She's denied all the accusations. Lied through her teeth. Said it's us Murrays who have just got it in for her, meaning it's me flaming shoving her. And cos we've got no proof about her nasty stunts. Mrs Plummer knows this. She promised to pull a finger out once Imelda got back to school. Go back to square one. Which is that flaming school doing nothing about it. Well, maybe it's not the school letting them down. Maybe it's me. And how do you figure that out? Apparently, Imelda said that it was impossible for a girl to bully a boy. And they bought it? But it shouldn't be possible, should it? I can't help thinking we're turning them soft. I spend more time with Anthony than I ever did with Steve when he was growing up. I mean, I hug Anthony and I used to play fight with Steve. The amount of hugs you give Anthony has got nothing to do with him getting picked on. Hasn't it? No. Kid, we've got a dress code in this kitchen. Sorry, I put my uniform in the wash basket and I had nothing to get changed into. Forward planning. Mm. I wish we had our own place. <sighs> when are we going to make some proper money? Soon, you know, I'm casing Christy. What, do you want bar work for peanuts? Look, I know it's not ideal, but something will come up. Well, that's something. Better hurry up and it better be cash. I've got to buy my beauty course back. But you know, we haven't got 50. We could barely afford the rent this week. I need 100. What? Inflation. So, you better get on to Christy and get him to get you something quick. Because at the end of the day, this course could be the only thing that keeps a roof over our head. I'll see what I can do. Hey, do you want to hand off to that towel? <laughs> <laughs> but there must be some mistake. I'll call you back. Katie? Where is she? Uh, she's in the bath. Anything urgent? How is she? Oh, still filling the hankies. Mm. Best not tell her then. Don't know how she'll take it. Oh, spill? Mm. I've heard that Anthea and Ron have split up. Go away! The stress must have taken its toll going to bed night after night with that paperback face. I could make her another coffee. Nothing stronger. Me? I'm a tea towel. <laughs> since when? Well, since I got my priorities in order. And realised I had to be on the ball for those who needed me. The two fat ladies win. <sighs> That's precisely why they don't use those terms anymore. They're offensive. I'm only messing with you. Take it you didn't. Spent money like water. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But I know how I can reap some back. Give this number to Jerome. There's a bar job going at the bingo hall. <laughs> the bingo hall? I don't think it's his kind of vibe. I mean, that could seriously damage his rep. He needs money. I need his money. Does he want it or not? Oh, made enough for Lindsay and Carly there. Force of habit. Oh, it cracked me up the way she followed your aunt, Shelton Grandad. Oh. You mustn't half miss them. Tell me about it. Yeah. But I'm happy if she's happy. Oh, Lindsay had her wings clipped, living here with me. No. Oh. It must be weird, though. I mean, with them. Carly gone and Jackie and Wills. No, he's got us now, though, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, and you're both part of the change, you know. Me moving on in year zero. Only trouble is, everywhere to look, I'm surrounded by the past. All of Jackie's taste! Even every flaming thing I use, Jackie's choice. Blech. Well, lash it then. Oh, flog it. If you want to get rid of all the old ghosts, redecorate. Make it more. Jimmy C. Oh, ah, uh, yeah. Too much like hard work, that. I thought it was meant to be year zero. You know, changing and all that. Timothy, you need cash for changing things. Ah! Uh, it's Metsville. It's the kitchen of town for four. Probably celebrated the 18th with you. <laughs> Listen, you two, pair of moaning minis. You pay rent, yeah? Tell me about it. Right, so it's your house, your home. You change it. Do I even want to? Look, as long as it doesn't cost me a bean, I don't care what you do. But no weary bin purple! Brilliant. Yeah, if we had the money. Well, you'll just have to double sweet talk, Christy, then, won't you? Look, I've only got a minute. Max is feeding the kids. And? 
Well, why did you walk out on me? You got what you came round for, didn't you? Thanks for the offer, Jack. But I'd hate to see you overstretch yourself for your own brother. What, well, Mike? I thought I was doing you a favour. Now, Great Granny's is running at a loss, so I would be stretching it for childcare. Aye. Yeah. It's me who's running this business. Well, you could have turned it down, you know, if you're so stressed at the moment. Not when my dad left it in my hands. Jackie, I stood by my dad every inch of the way. I was the only one in this family who never let him down, especially when you were too occupied with your fancy wedding. All oh, right, is that what this is all about? My dad asking me. You know damn well me and Rachel are struggling at the moment. And if you had been asked to run it, what would you have expected a wage? Same as what Andy had took. Well, I'm not getting one. I'm doing this in my spare time, purely for me dad. <sighs> Look, <clears throat> we're just knackered. The stress me dad's only just hitting us. You said yourself we're in this together. And I think I know what you're going through. I don't know, maybe a week's crash money isn't enough for you to get straight. So I was about me lending you some, enough for you and Rachel to stand on your own two feet. <laughs> you patronising cow. Well, I'm only trying to help you, again. How? By giving the no mark of the family a hand out? Well, if it's a pride thing. You've got no idea, have you? Sitting in your poncy house, stressing about your poncy DVD player and your poxy decorating, playing mum while being rich. Yeah, playing, because you can afford to, can't you? I am a mum. You certainly saved yourself 30 grand when you married Max, didn't you? Oh, do you know what? You're right. You are the no mark of the family. I know it, and my dad knows it. You can't even keep Beth in nappies, let alone run a business. And you expected me dad to trust you when you've had the heavies knocking at his door. Get lost. You shove your charity right up where it hurts. And tell me dad is no Mark's son who will be visiting him, ever. Anyone want to join me? Just an orange juice for me, please. You don't need that. Don't I? I know something that'll cheer you up. Don't say. Oh, well, Anthea's left wrong, for good by the sounds of it. <laughs> and you, eh? Sammy. Well, this is what she wants to hear. She's done one because she's purged herself and she can't live with it. Katie, calm down. <sighs> this is what I need. I mean, Anthea knows the truth. She's proved it by running. Maybe there's a chance that Ron will get his just deserves. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to launch a civil action. That'll make him pay. The man's locked up and his marriage is ruined. That's enough, surely. Not nearly enough. Why was Anthea get off? You are. Oh, what a bunch of happy campers you lot are. Look, don't worry about Mike. He'll come round, he always does. So there's no chance that he'll change his mind about coming to see me dad with me. What's your problem? Come on, you tell me you went all the way to Tenerife and never copped off. I don't think because your mummy's in the audience that I won't batter you. Dad. Don't go away, cos we're back to Brookside in a couple of mins, where Katie wants revenge.